Hola, how is everyone doing on Wellness Wednesday? I'm Jamie Peel. I'm the training specialist at JWB and your host for the week. I hope you're having a great week so far. I love seeing all of your posts on the social wall. It's really inspiring. Uh, some of your papers yesterday looked just like mine. Uh, some looked like Sardex and some were unique. And I'm glad to see that you all enjoyed that experiment and uh, and you loved watching Rita. Today, I invite you to take out your stress buster wheel. It's in your swag. And I want you to share how you practice self-care during stressful times. I personally tend to want to access nature. I go on a pretty drive or I go to the beach or the park. I like to eat by the water, or take a walk with a pretty view. So go ahead and post that on the social wall. Can't wait to see. Today, you will hear from our outstanding speaker, Johnny Crowder. He will be sharing his approach to growing hope. Johnny is the CEO for Cope Notes, and he has a very interesting story, but more on that later. Before I turn it over to Johnny, your challenge word for today is believe, because it's important to believe that you can make a difference and believe that you're not just average, you're awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Crowder. Hey y'all, my name is Johnny Crowder and I am the founder and CEO of Cope Notes and I'm also a huge mental health advocate. I love doing public speaking and raising awareness about what mental health actually looks like in our daily lives. And actually, a big reason why I'm not with you right now is because I am doing my second TED Talk about mental health. Obviously, this is my favorite subject to talk about. And then the talk is titled, Why I Don't Want to Die Anymore. And what makes that really impressive, not the fact that I'm giving a TED Talk, but the fact that I don't want to die anymore, what makes that really impressive is my history. I guess without context, without knowing who I am or where I've been, someone not wanting to die probably isn't that impressive. It seems kind of normal. But for me, this is a monumental victory. 10, 15 years ago, there's no way I would have ever thought I'd be where I am today mentally. So here's some context. I grew up in a really abusive environment. I know a lot of you have read about ACEs, the Adverse Childhood Experiences. If you can think of a category of ACE, it is likely that I lived through it at some point. And I'm taking a lot of comfort in knowing that what happened to me wasn't for nothing. Like overcoming the adversity that I lived through as a child has created an opportunity to help other people. And now it's my favorite thing to do. So. My recovery was not linear though. It's not like my chart was always going up and to the right. Actually, ever since I was a kid, I had been self-harming and I was hallucinating as a toddler, elementary school, middle school. Um, by the time I got to middle school, high school, it was really challenging for me to communicate with other people. It was hard to make eye contact. It was hard to speak. Um, and there really wasn't, actually my first TED talk was about how I never had that like aha breakthrough moment. I'd always hoped for one, right? Like, you know, that's the story that everybody wants to hear is he's going through his life and everything's brutal. And then one day everything changed. And that's not really what it was like for me. It was, I, I never had that moment. It was like lots of hard work and sort of brute forcing my way through treatment. Actually, I started treatment in high school not it was against my will my mom actually forced me into treatment and um, my curiosity got the best of me and i started taking psychology courses in high school which then led me to pursue a degree in psychology at ucf and then i got involved in peer support and public advocacy and that's really where my heart kind of found its home was in this idea of peer support and connecting with other people and eventually I would found Cope Notes, which is a uh, mental health technology company that provides daily mental health support for people all over the world. But I do want to mention this, like this is not the part of the digital revolution where I come to take your jobs or I invent something that works you out of a job. The fact is, I'm not trying to do that. Like without, you saved my life. Like without 
treatment, without medication, without therapy, I wouldn't have even been alive to invent Cope Notes in the first place. So what you are doing for people who are ready for treatment, Cope Notes does for people who maybe aren't quite ready for treatment. And I did want to mention that, like, while we are on the same team, we're not here to talk about me. And just for a moment, let's try not to remember that we're here to talk about youth. Let's take a few minutes to make sure that we don't forget about you. When you're talking to the people that you serve, you know consciously, like, you can never tell what someone's going through or how dark, how dark it is. Like, we give people that benefit of the doubt all the time, but we forget to apply it to ourselves that we might be going through something real and challenging, not to mention the compassion fatigue that I know a lot of you are experiencing right now. You feel the weight on your shoulders and you wouldn't work in this line of work. You wouldn't work in this field or industry if you didn't actually care about the people you're serving. And that can feel heavy, but don't forget that mental health touches all of us. So even clinicians aren't immune to having to take care of their mental and emotional health. And I've fallen into this trap where I think like, oh, you know, I read this textbook or I watched this lecture. I went to school for this. And it, it can fool you into thinking that you're in an other category, like these things don't apply to you. And it can be challenging to share your experience, what you've been through, because you might be concerned that it might look like it devalues your expertise, or it might not look professional, or maybe you're in like a caregiver or leadership role, and you're like, I don't want to tell people what I'm going through. I want to be strong and have a stiff upper lip. But my buddy said something really good yesterday. She said, um, don't trust a therapist who isn't in therapy. And I think she was like, kind of being flippant, but there's truth to it, right? Like you wouldn't want to sign up for personal training with a personal trainer who is not in great shape. You want to seek help and advice from people who are walking the walk. And maybe you're not experiencing psychosis. Maybe you're not um, falling into the categories of exhibiting certain symptoms that you would associate with mental illness. But the fact is, because I know your line of work, I know that you are facing sustained stress and fatigue that's not wrong. You are dealing with a lot of stuff right now. There's a whole spectrum of stress and negative self-talk and overwhelm and burnout and loneliness that all of us are living through right now. Don't disqualify yourself from that part of the mental health conversation. It's not for those people. It's those people that you serve and then clinicians and people who know their stuff are actually totally fine all the time. That's not relatable. And me trying to put on a perfect face and look like I had it together actually further isolated me for so long because it's not easy to relate to someone who has a perfect day after a perfect day after a perfect day. It's much easier to relate to someone who says, I'm having a roughie. I'm going through some stuff because then you recognize that both of you are human. That's really been the backbone of peer support for me. A big reason why I do advocacy in the first place is because labels and stigma, both you judging yourself for not wanting to open your mouth about what you're going through, and also maybe looking side-eyed at someone who is going through something, whether you want to admit it or not, that type of stigma, self-stigma, kept me out of treatment, and it almost killed me. I almost died because I was too busy judging myself, saying, what would it mean if I open my mouth and what will people think? And what does that say about me if I use a mental health resource? That thought process almost took my life. And if you can't tell, I'm pretty passionate about this stuff. And a lot of people ask me, when will I retire? Like, when will I give it up and pursue something else? Like, oh, oops, music or like fashion stuff, sneakers. I love that stuff, but I'm not going to retire until the general consensus among the human population is that physical health and mental health are of the same importance. One day we'll just say health. And when that happens, I will be retired in Hawaii with my toes in the sand, sipping a virgin daiquiri. But until that day, I have my work cut out for me and you have your hands full too. But how lucky are we to do this work? How lucky are we to be busy with what we're busy with? The fact is you're changing other people's lives 
every single day with your work. You are a hero to them, a modern day superhero. I'm not exaggerating. You are changing and saving lives. But don't forget to be a hero to yourself. And one thing that getting older has taught me is that sometimes you cannot be your own hero as badly as you want to be. Sometimes you can't be that for yourself. But the good news is you're probably sitting next to one right now. Or maybe the person in the Zoom window next to yours is a hero. And all you have to do is stop judging yourself for long enough to open your mouth and acknowledge that what you're going through is real and challenging and that you are a person too. The fact is, the only reason I'm still alive is because of people like you, because of treatment, because of medication, because people like you have chosen to use their time and energy to support people like me. But peer support, being able to connect with someone who understood me, taught me that I wasn't isolated. It taught me that people cared about me. It taught that other people got it. They could comprehend what I was going through. And I had no idea. And I promise you that you will be overwhelmed when you finally open up and realize that other people have like been waiting in the wings to support you, just waiting for you to open your mouth and relate, to share about what you're going through. So thank you for doing all of the work that you do for other people. And today, please try showing yourself the same compassion you show the people you serve. Wasn't he something? I love that he preaches that your physical health is just as important as mental health. We have a challenge word for Johnny's presentation. It is growing hope. Go to challenges and add that passcode in now. Well, we want you to grow hope and we want to help you do that. So the first 50 people who click on the Cope Notes banner below and signs up gets an annual subscription to Cope Notes, which means you can receive a text a day to combat anxiety, regret, hopelessness, negative thoughts, and more. I have Cope Notes and I really enjoy it. You can use it as your own personal journal if you want. Here's an example of what kind of text you can get. The world around you might be rooting for you. Set your problems down for a second and try to identify something or someone that's working in your favor. If you like that, click on the banner, we got you. For your reference, we have added a children's mental health activity book for you to use with your programs, as well as a mental health resource guide in the resources to save section. Tomorrow, we have a live discussion planned with two behavioral specialists from Pinellas County, plus a terrific moderator from one of our neighborhood family centers. You won't wanna miss it because you will have the opportunity to ask questions and get their professional advice in real time. Tune in at 10.30 a.m. sharp for Thursday Thoughts You'll hear some great tips on how to manage behavior on your programs. Enjoy the rest of Wellness Wednesday. I'm gonna go check out the social wall now. From JWB Command Control, over and out.